Those of you reaching level 50 and beyond in Lost Ark should now be facing the confusing and extremely important engraving system. Engravings can be confusing since each one has a unique trait, which has X amount of nodes on it, and X amount of nodes are required to even activate the skill. Fortunately, when you know what's going on with these things, they're super beneficial and pretty damn key to endgame builds. The worst part though is you can mess these up pretty easily and that could set you back in a serious way. So welcome to Rage Gaming, my name is Holo and this is everything you need to know about Lost Ark's engravings and trait systems. Engravings are key to your builds because they're the most reliable way you can trigger important traits to power your build. Each class has two main traits to choose between which essentially will decide your playstyle. As an example, as a Deadeye here, I can choose between these two. You can pull these up with alt i or you can just press escape and uh, find engravings here but anyway these are your engravings your universal and then these are my class ones so in this case i have enhanced weapon and i have pistolier pistolier means i can only use my pistols but those pistols are way stronger while enhanced weapon would mean that every time i change weapons see how my hands are glowing now i have 20 percent crit and these get stronger the higher level they are now one of these traits is obviously your meta pick and i've gone for the meta one in enhanced weapon but you want to have at least one of these going as soon as possible because they're ridiculously strong since this is also an important choice i can't actually get both of them i need to intentionally unlock the one i want which in my case was enhanced weapon and then go on to improve it to get the better levels this is why engravings are so important right but also you can mess this up you could either pick poorly by picking a weak trait to work towards unlocking, or worse, just waste your engraving books on random traits. Now, as I said, there's also universal traits, right? Ones that can be used on any class, and there's a quite a lot going on here. Ideally, the first thing you do is get your class trait going, and then you look to buff out the build with various universal traits. Here's an example from a guide on Dead Eyes. This suggests that I should have enhanced weapon, which is what I do, and then with universal traits, finish up the build using things like grudge, mass, or whatever suits the build. Where do you get these traits though? And where do engravings actually come from is the next question. So if I pull up the profile menu in game, where we can see our character and the equipment. We can see our armor here and we can see our accessories here. Now under the armor are these two slots, which you can see is my enhanced weapon from my engravings. These are engraving slots. This comes from my engraving list. So here, let me show you if I unequip these and I just take this, put it on here, put it on here. Cool, it's equipped. Now you'll obviously notice that I have enhanced weapon active and I don't have pistolier active, even though they both say zero out of 20. Meanwhile, if we look at the universal ones, you can see I have this one that's active at zero out of 20, but then a bunch that aren't active that have some in that are on the way to being active. That's because they come in different levels. To activate a trait in the first place, you must use the engraving book of that trait 20 times total and that will reach its first level which is what we've done here with this one in this case i've activated shield piercing four times i've got 16 more times to go before this will activate now on top of that <laughs> it gets a bit more complicated or potentially confusing so if i jump over to my engraving tab here what you can do is you can see where my engravings are currently coming from these traits and what i've got active as you can see i have master of ambush at seven and i have enhanced weapon at six but it only says level one. And then there's also level two and level three. The trait will not actually activate or do anything until you reach level one. And that requires these nodes to be lit up. And as you can see, it's five nodes to reach level one, 10 to reach level two, and 15 to reach level three. Each time it goes to the next level, it does the same thing, but more effectively. So in this case, it goes from 20% for nine seconds to 25%, to 30%. So where are these coming from? Well, with the case of Enhanced Weapon, I have six nodes lit up, which is just enough for level one. And you may have noticed, I have Enhanced Weapon, right? And I put it into my engraving slots. Each one of these is worth three nodes. You can see it says, adds three power nodes point to Enhanced Weapon when equipped. So three plus three, that's six. I have six, there we go, it's active. But where's this Master of Ambush coming from? Well, that is coming from my ability stone, which has Master of Ambush, node plus six, it has six of those. So that's five or more than five, it activates. And you can see I also have some nodes and a bunch of other stuff. Where's that coming from? My accessories, because they also have traits on them. Meaning long term, you don't just want high eye level accessories, you also want accessories with traits on them that are benefiting you. Traits are very important though, and some are better than others. And also, 
there's negative traits that make you weaker, which I'll explain later. All right, so we know these are important and how they work, but how do we actually get them? In the case of engravings, you need either universal engraving books or class engraving books, ultimately called trait name and then engraving recipe. You use these books and then unlock one node of that trait. Now, as I said earlier, you need 20 of them total to unlock that engraving at its lower level and start using it. Not only that, but there's tiers to a trait as well. Now, as you can see, this will give me three power node points, as I said earlier. If it was a higher quality, not uncommon, but in fact rare the next tier, then each one of these would give me six per. So instead of having three and three, which gets me a total of six, I would have six and six, which would get me 12, which would actually activate level two, making it even stronger. And then it goes up two more levels. It'll go to epic, which will give you nine per trait. And it goes up to legendary, which will give you 12 per trait, which is pretty insane. All right, so where do you actually get the books and unlock these engravings? You'll get them as just one book or a bag full of books or even chests full of them from various content. Main quests, daily login rewards, region rewards, specific side content. And I strongly suggest if you do have any of these engraving recipe books or bags or chests or whatever, do not just blindly use them and open them until you're certain which traits you actually need for your character and your build, because maybe your alt will need it later. So do some research on your class and only activate the ones you're going to use. To find specific engraving books like I needed to, there's great resources out there to tell you their exact locations. Here's a bunch of quests and their locations by It's Karma and what they give you. These are what I use to get my class engraving going as soon as possible. Through this, we can actually get our class engraving going before we're even level 50. Dailies and weeklies are another source for these books though. They're given in much smaller doses, so single books at a time, so you want to be very careful which traits you're going to work on to begin with. Worst case, you can buy them on the auction house, but that's that's going to be very expensive. We can get these books in places like the Tower, Chaos Dungeons, Guardian Raids, the Cube, Abyss Dungeons, and even many of the islands around the world, depending on what you're looking for. So you can Google the one you want and where to find it. Engravings aside then, I mentioned earlier that I'm getting that whole trait, Master of Ambush, from just one place, my ability stone right here. That's great for me because this is a meta trait that I really want and I have level one very early, so that's a good start. Ability stones actually come from all kinds of sources. For example, I got these three from just doing chaos dungeons. You can target them when we pull up Una's tasks. So here we go, Stern Stigma. If I want to go work on this one, which it doesn't tell me what it has, but I have to go get it and then see what traits it's got. I could go work on this daily and intentionally just farm out these stones to hopefully get a trait that's good for me. What's really important then is to understand that each stone comes not only with a positive trait, but two and then a negative one. Ability stones can only have universal traits rather than any of the awesome class traits, which is unfortunate. But, you know, it does have two positives as well as the negative. Now, negative can be terrible. This is defense reduction, uh, defense reduction, uh, attack power down. You can get movement speed down. These are pretty awful. Fortunately, they're not gonna actually be active until you have five, just as we looked at before. So for example, I actually have a negative trait on right now, but you can see this attack power reduction is not active, therefore not doing anything, because it only has three nodes of up, not five. Now, these ability stones I have in my inventory, I can't actually do anything with them. Like I can't equip them just like that because they're not currently cut. To cut a ability stone, you just need to go to ability stone cutter, which you can find in all of the cities. Uh, so there's this guy, and then you just drag it in or uh, click it in, and then here we go. So we can see which positive traits it has, which negative it's got, and then work out, is this something I really care about? So for me, I am pretty good with increased mass, so that would be nice to have. Not as good as the one I have now, but just for the example, let's say I really want this. All right, so we need to cut it. As you can see, there is a success rate on a cut. So here's what I do, basically. If it's higher than 55%, I cut positive. If it's lower than 55%, I cut negative. That's to hopefully mean that it doesn't trigger and doesn't light up a node on a bad trait and then does light up when I'm doing a good one. So here we go, let's do it. So 75%, that's a pretty good chance to get mass. It triggered, there's a node. 65%, that's a good chance. All right, 55%, that's not as good. Let's put it on the other trait I don't care about. It didn't activate. Good, we made the right choice. Back up to 65, let's try mass again. Nice, 55, back down to fury, 65. Oh, there, all right, that's a fail on a 65. 75, pretty good, 65. All right, so I got four nodes on mass. That's not enough to actually trigger the trait. We needed five. Let's finish this off then. So 75%. Lightning Fury, 65, 75, 65. Wow, 
I didn't see any low numbers there, so this is going to be bad. I've got 75% chance to trigger a node on defense reduction. Ow. 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 Oh, hey, it didn't trigger. Okay, good. Wow. Okay, great. Great. Okay. So with only two nodes lit up, this will not activate. With only two nodes lit up, it won't activate. And with only four, not five, I don't get the mass. Now it's cut. I can actually equip it. So let's do that. And then we go to our tab and we can see I no longer have Ambush and I very nearly have Lightning Fury and I very nearly have Increased Mass. They're not triggered though, so they're not doing anything. Finally, let's talk about accessories. As I mentioned, you will also get traits from accessories. So you know how Master of Ambush is really good for me? Look at this necklace. It has one random engraving effect, Master of Ambush. Perfect. That's exactly what I want. That's where I'm getting that extra single node from, my necklace. If I was able to get all my other ac accessories to have Master of Ambush, that would be plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four. That would be get me right here into level three. So level two would be active and my Master of Ambush would not be giving me 5% extra damage for a back attack, but 12%. That's really good. The thing about accessories, though, is they can actually have class traits on them, like my enhanced weapon, which is really good, unlike the ability stones. The problem with accessories, however, is they can actually get negative traits on them. So they have rarities, right? You start with the blue ones, and each blue one, a blue rare one, has one trait and one node lit in that trait. Purple or epics have one trait and either one or two nodes lit. However, they also come with a negative trait. That negative trait could have up to three nodes lit, which is something to be very careful with. Finally, a legendary or orange accessory, well, they can have two positive traits on them instead of just one, and one of those positives will have one node, and then another one of those positives can have one or two nodes lit. The negative trait, though, on that is just the same, with one to three nodes lit possible. That is pretty damn good. So even at the lowest level, Blue accessories might even be the same eye level as the one you're wearing, but it has a better trait on it, which you should equip. Like in my case, where I found this necklace that had Master of Ambush, and I definitely wanted that over the random thing my old necklace had. So I hope that explains the core of engravings and traits, how they work and how to get them yourself. It is very important to understand which traits are good for you and your class, and to work on those specifically, rather than say unlocking any you find and not being careful about what you actually choose. In many cases, during the leveling process, you'll get Get these bags of books that let you choose various class traits and you want to make sure that you're choosing the one your class or an alt will need. If you aren't sure what traits to focus, which build to go, then do some research on the topic. The game is not new, just new in the West. There are so many great resources for all this information. Like if we look at the Korean servers for which class traits are most popular, we can literally see the percent of that class population, which trait is more popular, which trait is being used over the other. Look at Deadeye, 94.5% of the population are using enhanced weapon like me. This is of course from the top 200 players, the people who are at sort of the peak of the meta. So it's a clear preferred pick over Pistolier, making enhanced weapon the meta pick. Good luck with your engraving and traits then. I hope this video did help you. Do drop a like if it did, so I can make more videos like this one. But until next time, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thanks for watching. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.